Hi everybody, welcome back to Pagan Switchy Corner. My name is Pagan, and today I am joined by a really awesome author who wrote a beautiful book, which is Path of the Hedge Witch by Joanna Vanderhoeven. I'm so happy you're here. I loved your book. It was so fantastic. And also as a fellow hedge witch, it was right up my alley and it was just a joy to read. Also, it was so pretty to read. Like I loved all the like little like ways that they designed the book. It was so gorgeous. Oh my god. I know. I was so pleased with that when I saw it. Just those those little touches just make all the difference when you have something that's really nice just to look at and to hold. It, it does make all the difference. Yes. And I'm also one of those people that I like the way books feel. And this was one of those books that um felt really really a, great in your hands it's got a strokeable cover yes it does <laughs> and it's it, that, that it just that is comfortable finish. yeah <laughs> so it was just a wonderful book to read and like i said as a fellow hedge witch this was the interesting thing is the books about hedge witchery are very hit or miss on the market um mm -hmm. some are very great and others it's just like um I'm not sure this is up my alley, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. But yours was like probably the best one I would now recommend to people who are interested in the path of head retreat. So oh, wow. Thank you. That, that. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I think it's because hedge witchery is just so diverse. You yes. know, everyone's path is just so different that, you know, there will be you won't find two books the same out there on on hedge witchcraft and you know that's a great thing i think you know even if you don't agree with one book you'll most assuredly find another book that you can resonate with so it, it's absolutely. all good yes absolutely <laughs> but i think yours definitely gives the best definition of the book itself of or i'm sorry of the book of the path of hedge witchery and really all the aspects that it encompasses and so that was a really awesome thing to read and i loved your historical aspects of it and how much history you also brought into the craft itself. Mm -hmm. It was just such a wonderful experience to read this book. Um, I'm one of those people that if I love oh, a book, I will gush about it for two hours straight. So, <laughs> and my audience <laughs> is very used to this. Again, shameless plug, everybody. If you, this is something you're interested in, please go pick up a copy of Joanna's books. There will be a link in the uh, bio of the podcast. Y'all know where to go. By now, if you've listened to my show, you know where to go. So. I will have it in the description and there's my shameless plug. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing I was just absolutely enamored with is on my podcast, I really promote the message of practicing your way mm -hmm. and your book really hit that home. And mm -hmm. I remember, I, I think it was probably in the first chapter I read it. It's like, this is not going to be everybody's path. This is going to be you do you if you don't take and leave what you want. And I'm just like, oh, my God, she's in my brain. I love it. This is going to be great. <laughs> so my first question for you is you have written a lot of books on Druidry. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose to write this one? Um. Well, after my my um, last book on Druidry, the the book of Hedge Druidry, I I kind of felt like I said all that I needed to say on Druidry for the time being. <laughs> you know, after you write so many books, there's you kind of run out of words for a bit. Plus, mm -hmm. you also want to do something new, and I felt it was time to kind of share um, another part of myself with with my readers. Um, I have some really lovely, loyal readers, and I thought it was time um, to just share that aspect of myself. Um, and they've kind of had hints here and there because I, I wrote a book called, um, um, oh gosh, I can't even remember right now. <laughs> there's, there's just been so many books um, called The Hedge Druid's Craft, which was um, a, an introduction on how to blend Wicca, witchcraft and Druidry together. And so that was kind of like the first foray, foray into um, sharing, you know, my my past and my work with witchcraft and Wicca. Um, so, so yeah, that was the main reason. I just wanted to talk more about it. And once I started writing, I'm like, yes, I have quite a bit to say. So, yeah, there'll be more than one book on the subject. <laughs> That's wonderful to hear. And the book was, like I said, so, so good. 
and so now hearing there's going to be more than one book i'm like super excited because now i'm, like, um, I'm already I'm, yeah. that's it. I'm already <laughs> writing the follow-up yeah llewellyn have said uh yes they've uh, signed the contract it's all go and i'm oh, writing good. it this year so that is it so should, wonderful should be out in a couple of years <laughs> That's okay. We understand how the publishing industry works. And sometimes, you know, the, I'll have authors be like, yes, I'm writing the book, but it has to go through post-production and editing and all that other stuff. And oh, by my the goodness. time you get done with it, it's like, oh, that was three years ago that I actually wrote that book. And it's well, coming well, out now. I mean, COVID has seriously messed things up too, because, mm -hmm. you know, what did authors do during the two years of COVID? They wrote. They wrote so. Books. Publishers have got submissions and everything coming out the wazoo. So <laughs> I, I understand. I get a lot of books from the publishing companies, and it's just like, how did you guys write all these books? Uh, for example, Storm Fairy Wolf, um, mm -hmm. who is a really dear friend of mine, he wrote like three books during the pandemic, and I'm like, dude, I'm still working on like one from five years ago. <laughs> how did you? He's like, I just got busy and got hyper focused on it. And, lo and behold here's three books later and i'm like oh, all right that's good it. for you <laughs> yeah I know, I know a lot of people who've done that so i mean <laughs> the, next, the next few years are just going to be like glory days of, in pay, pagan publishing because there's yes. so much out there right now <laughs> and as the fun thing about it too is you know when i get the catalogs and all this i'm looking at the books and i'm looking at all the stuff that's coming out and that you know that's advertised for that quarter and it's like just send me the whole thing all of yeah, them. yeah. I, I'm not even sure if I'm going to get to read them in this year alone, but just send them all. I want them all. Like, yeah. Whoa. And it's so just astonishing. Like when I sit there and I look at them, I'm just like, how did you guys come up with a book title for this and this thing? And it's like, wow, this is so awesome. And it just floors me. I'm so impressed with all the authors and all the things yeah. that you guys are doing. And it's just, oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> And the new publishing companies that are coming out too, yes. you know, that's, that's really nice that, that there's so, you know, it's not just the few big ones anymore. There's lots of different independent companies out there that are putting out some really excellent work. So, yes. yeah, I, I remember I'm excited about that too. Well, I remember like the, you know, the nineties, the early nineties, you know, used to be the glory days of, of pagan publishing, but I think now we're having a complete renaissance of it as well. And there's just so much good stuff out there. We're, we're seriously rivaling those, those early days when suddenly everything started to come out. <laughs> I completely would agree with that, you know, and it's interesting because I remember looking back in like the early 2000s, late 90s, when I was kind of starting to dabble in my craft and kind of mm -hmm. figuring out if that's the way I wanted to go. And, you know, being a girl from a small town, there wasn't a whole lot of options. And then mm -hmm. you would go to the bookstore and there would be just one shelf and all yeah. of the titles were so diverse <laughs> from each other. And it's like, okay, am I going to go down this road where it's the I, the teeny bot magic, as I called it back in the day, where it was all <laughs> like the witchcraft for teens. And um, it's like, sh should I go down that? Because I'm still, I'm like, you know, 19 years old. Should I go down that road? Maybe, maybe not. Should I go down the adult one? The adult one looks scary because I know nothing about it. And it's like, oh. <laughs> and it's like, now there's 25 books just for one little itty bitty sliver of the section that you need. And it's like, okay, if you want to yeah. go down this road, here's the 25 books that you could buy and they all say yeah. wonderful things and they're all diverse and beautiful and it's like oh just so great I love it I love it so much it is going to be <laughs> such a fun experience for the next I would say probably five to ten years to see what oh, comes yeah. out of this you know renaissance like you said so definitely so great uh the other thing I was wondering about is when it comes to hedge witchery there's so many different aspects of it mm. And so many things that are kind of under its umbrella. Mm. What is your favorite aspect of it? Um, or if you can't I, pick just one, pick your top three. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think because for me, being a hedge witch kind of um, stands on three things. It's a love of nature, um, the ability um or the willingness to explore trance practices um and working as a solitary so pretty much 
all of those three things to me are like the most important thing about hedge witchcraft and resonate with me um, as a person because you know I'm all of those I am all of those things. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm I'm a very solitary kind of feline creature. Um I've I've explored lots of different kinds of trance practices and I'm always, you know, willing to learn more and to explore more. Um I tend to have no fear when it comes to things, which um, is a good thing and a bad thing sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just my love of the natural world and the landscape wherever I find myself in. Um that's just super, super important to me as a person, um, just full stop. I think that that is absolutely wonderful. And the the fun thing about me and my hedge witchery practice too is my trans practices. So I love that you kind of touched on that yeah. because if that's something that, interestingly enough, that is what led me into witchcraft is I was doing mm-hmm. trans practices long before I even really knew what I was doing. Yeah. And that was one of those things that got me in a little bit of trouble because again, I didn't know what I was doing, but it, once Sometimes I figured that helps. it out, yeah, once I figured it out, it's like, oh, that's where I screwed that up. Okay, cool. Let's not do that again. <laughs> and, a lot of it relies on intuition too, yeah. though. So, you know, you have to listen to your gut and try these things out. Exactly. And experimentation is always a fun thing, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to your trans practices, I know you Mm -hmm. talked about many different ways within your book that you explore your trans stuff. Uh, If you had to recommend your top starter kind of kit for trans practice, what would you Mm -hmm. recommend? Um, Well, if you're kind of musical like me, I would say probably drumming. Uh, would be the best um drumming or singing those those are my two big things to to get into trance um I mean all I have to do is like stand on a hillside and just start singing what I feel the land is saying you know and having that come out through me and instantly that that just takes me to a completely different level of awareness where I'm more in tune with the land. I'm more in tune with the spirits of the land, um, with deity, with the ancestors, with whatever it is that I'm trying to communicate. And um, drumming as well. I, I find drumming can really, it's, I think it's the resonance and the vibration that just kind of resets your body and your soul into something that is much more able to tra- travel between the worlds, to walk between the worlds. Um, just by that simple vibration of the drum. Um, yeah, for me, it hits a reset button and I'm away, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It makes perfect sense. And I, I feel exactly the same way. If I, I am one of those people that I can listen to a song or um, I'm not a big singer anymore. I was in my youth, but not so much anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, but listening to drumming tracks or listening to even just certain music that will come through on my playlist I'm just like oh I've lost time now where did I go and those are one of those things it's just something moves within you um, through the melody and there's something so magical about music anyway and it can be also traced through science so if you're somebody that's like oh music's not really magical yeah actually it is just trace it through science i promise there's tons of studies about it and the frequencies and how they react with the body and that how they also react to spirit it's so cool it's if you're a science nerd please go check that out Um, (laughs) if you're not that that's cool too check it out anyway you might be be interested in it um but yeah i know i'm one of those people too that listening to those drumming tracks is very interesting and it's so funny because when i was a teenager and um you know late teens early 20s when i was um, living with my grandparents in taos new mexico Mm -hmm. we lived probably about a mile or so away from the pueblo and so once a week they would have their weekly powwows Mm -hmm. and you could hear the drumming coming across the air and it would be the sound (laughs) of ricochet off the mountains and you Mm -hmm. would hear it very clearly and i would, would be laying in bed just with my window opening listening to that and the coyotes howl and I would slip into trance at yeah. the time I didn't really know that was trance fast forward <laughs> a couple of years later into my witchcraft practices and like oh that's what that was so yeah. I think that that was it was 
it's such a liminal and surreal experience to look back on now and mm-hmm. to understand that but i think that sh- it's just so cool how it works out so i love that, that it, it works out wonderful for you as well yeah i mean that's such a wonderful introduction to trance practice what you experience that's amazing yeah and you know it's also one of those things too that you're bridging that natural world because you have the coyotes that are out there singing and mm. you have you know the drums coming from you know the native ceremonies and so it was mm. just a really cool experience that i don't get to go back and very often and hear again but no. it, it's still really awesome when that happens okay. Coyote, coyotes know how to do trance practice <laughs> that makes sense you know i think there's a lot of animals mystery behind that a lot of animals know how to do it <laughs> I would say that is very true as well. And uh, mm-hmm. now it's a different experience because we have uh, the frogs in the summer here because I live in Tennessee oh, now. Oh, so I miss that so sing. much. Uh, where I grew up in Quebec, we had the the frogs singing in the valley um, behind our house. And I used to fall asleep listening to those peeper frogs all the time. Mm-hmm. And I just hear that sound and I am just instantly back there in the heat of the summer just having this nice, warm, calm, relaxed feeling in my soul and in my body. It's just, it just takes me straight back. Uh, we don't really have that here where I live in England now, but I, I love that sound. And the sound of blackbirds, mm-hmm. uh, sorry, red-winged blackbirds calling and the chickadees. Those are the three sounds that just instantly transport me straight back to the forest where I grew up. <laughs> We have uh, a lot of jay here, jays here, so we have the mm. blue jays, and we also have some mocking jays as well. Mm. And um, they they will sing early in the summer, and it's unusually warm right now for January, mm. and so we've been hearing them a lot. And I'm like, those are springtime birds. It's January. Uh, yeah, they're confused, but it's okay, yeah. and it's so nice yeah. to listen to. And it was such a wonderful experience just yesterday it was so warm here that i had all my doors and windows open it was almost 70 degrees here um and that's fahrenheit for those who may be listening in uh the uk and Mm -hmm. uh it was so warm here and hearing all those spring birds it was such a magical day and i'm (laughs) like i know it's january 17th i am very much aware of the date but i'm gonna go work in the garden i have to (laughs) i have to be outside today and I know that like I can't reasonably plant right now because it's going to snow in like five days but yeah still. I, well, I call those days gift days you know <laughs> they're just they're a gift from spring going here you go but then winter will take it back <laughs> <laughs> winter's like no this is my season go away spring mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so in your aspects of hedge witchery, do you also encompass kitchen witchery? Because I know a lot of uh, hedge witches also do kitchen witchery in addition mm. to their craft. Is that something that you do? Um, to a certain extent, um, the herbs that I work with, like I'll I'll make my own teas or tinctures and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm um, I'm not big on like cooking and that sort of thing in my practice. Um, for me, you know, cooking is is it you know it's it's nourishment it's you know you know helping connect with the land and that but it's it's not so much a magical practice as it would be for like other kitchen witches and that sort of thing so it's more on the herb craft side that you'll find me in the kitchen rather than in everyday cooking and that sort of thing I still think that's wonderful and I'm somebody that does a lot with uh, herbs as well and I also do a lot with cooking um you know I technically I'm I classify myself as a homesteader so I do all that fun gardening and all that good stuff so I think that that's really awesome now let's talk a little bit about druidry because druidry is not something I've actually really talked about on my show so would you kind of give the audience a little bit of an overview of what druidry druidry is and uh kind of how that practice works well, um, Druidry is very similar in a lot of regards to different traditions of witchcraft. Um, modern Druidry, I'm talking about here, because uh, modern Druidry kind of grew up alongside um, Wicca, because uh, Gerald Gardner and had a friend, Ross Nichols, who, was, uh, who became the head of the Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids. And together, those two fellows kind of 
worked out, um, you know, the modern wheel of the year with the eight festivals and that. And so there, there's lots of um, similar kind of resonances between Druidry and Wicca. Um, I would simply say that um, Druidry has a much more, well, obviously, a, a Celtic uh, slant to it. Um, and in, in practice today, uh, there, there's, well, like witchcraft as well, there's so many different types of Druidry. So... Mm-hmm. Um, I would say Druidry is it's a, a pagan religion that um, honors nature, that um, mainly works with um, Celtic pantheons, but can incorporate other pantheons such as Norse and Saxon and that sort of thing. Um, and that's uh, available to anyone, regardless of you know gender or culture or whatever. It's it's um, open to everyone. Oh, that was going to be my next question that I had heard that a lot of aspects of Druidry were closed practices. So it's it's nice to hear that that might have been misinformation. And, yes. Um, some you don't you don't have to have Celtic lineage to be a Druid. Definitely not. OK. <laughs> that, that Druidry, answers that Druidry. question. <laughs> I, I was surprised to learn a couple of years ago that Druidry is actually really, really big in South America now. And that really? was a real eye opener for me. Yeah. So I was like, oh, wow, that's really interesting. How cool is that? <laughs> How cool is that indeed? I think that yeah. that is so awesome. It's always exciting to hear about the different aspects of paganism that have traveled the globe and have now Mm. worked their way into certain cultures and certain societies and societies that you wouldn't expect to be you know practice for example south african uh you wouldn't expect them to you know practice druidry or at Mm. least celtic druidry Mm. um and so i think that that's really fascinating to kind of see how um instead of being a separate kind of thing where we have so many different cultures that are all separate from each other a lot of it's starting to intermingle and we're becoming more and more of a singular kind of group instead of yeah. just you know well i mean you have those folks over there you have these ones over here but now it's like no everybody's everybody's welcome to the table it's okay bring what you well, got yeah, I mean, yeah the table's big enough for everybody you know we're, we're all just one human race and we all exactly. have the same basic needs and desires and you know if you want to connect to the natural world well there's so many different ways to do it you know established ways and just your own ways you know if you want to do your own thing regardless of different cultures or traditions it's it's there waiting for you to connect with it so you know it's 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 awe inspiring in the fact that there are so many different cultures that have so many similarities. But you know, when you break it down, we're all just monkeys with car keys. So you know, we have <laughs> we have very similar needs and desires. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a wonderful image to really think about. It's like, uh, well, yeah, nope, you're right. Yeah, we are. <laughs> 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 we are we are all definitely just trying our best to survive on this crazy crazy planet and <laughs> still connect with something that is much bigger than ourselves so mm. i think that that's just a really exciting kind of thing to think about as well mm. so uh in aspects of druidry um i know that there is a lot of different aspects of almost trans like shape-shifting Mm. And are you familiar with any of those things? So, yeah, I mean, there are different types of um, Celtic versions of shape-shifting, um, especially in the Irish traditions. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, I haven't worked a huge bunch in shape-shifting in, in my own Druidry, but, you know, I do know some people who have. Um, but, yeah, it's it's... It's something that's attested to in the different myths. Um, you know, you can take different forms, um, you know, different myths say, you know, uh, some people, you know, will transform into a deer in order to escape people or whatever. So it's there. Um, you know, there are examples in the mythology that you can draw from. But again, it's it's still very much a, a personal thing. You know, you've got these few examples that you can glean some information on but really to actually do it yourself is kind of a bit of personal experimentation 
I would definitely agree with that. And I think that that's really awesome to you mm -hmm. know, hear your take on it. So that's very cool. Mm -hmm. So do you have any sort of classes or anything that you are currently teaching that you'd like to talk about? Um, I just finished uh, teaching um, in person classes um, here in Suffolk in England, uh, like an introduction to Wicca and witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So um, that's continuing on with the, a book club from the, the lovely um, people that were in that class. So uh, but that's a closed thing now. Um, and I, I was head of um, Druid College UK. Uh, however, we've had to close our doors due to the pandemic, and we're not entirely sure if or when we're going to open our doors again. Um, so at the moment, um, my teaching is online. So I teach an online introduction to Druidry course, um, which you can find uh, on my website. And um, I also teach some stuff on my Patreon community. So Last autumn, I taught an introduction to the goddess Freya course over the span of um, four or five months. Uh, and that was really good. And I might be expanding that and offering that um, outside of my Patreon community um, in the next few months. So keep an eye out on that on my website, because I'm also interested in um, Norse and Scandinavian uh, re pre-Christian religious traditions, cultures, and that's sort of thing because I've got some Scandinavian heritage in me as well so that's always appealed to me so I've got my finger in an awful lot of pies because <laughs> my goodness you know I, any, I feel that <laughs> any any religion any mythology you know just start talking about it and I'm there with you you know I just find the whole, it fascinating anything from anywhere any theology you know I'm there <laughs> I understand that. I I very much have a lot of fingers in the pot of the Celtic mythologies, um, mm. oddly enough, Egyptian mythology as well, and definitely mm. Norse because I work a lot with Norse deities and I work with some Celtic deities and a little pinky toe in the Greek mythologies as well. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. I think it's like, oh, you're, you're, you're talking about Egyptian? What are we talking about? Can I Can I join in? Can I, yeah. can I give you my two cents on things? That would be great. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I'm very much in that kind of same boat. So, And I think also a big part of paganism, too, is having that interest in the mythologies and the history and understanding where mm -hmm. we come from and how we can transmute some of that into a modern practice. Oh, so, I, I mean, I, I think curiosity is one of our greatest tools. Yes. Just use it and just learn everything you can with that open mind, because that's what we're put here on Earth to do is to just learn and discover and experience as much as possible. So why not do absolutely. it? Absolutely. Oh, I love that so much. Absolutely yeah. love that. So you have your new book that's coming out in a couple of years that you're currently writing that's going to be a... I guess yeah, that's the continuation the, that's, of this one. <laughs> yeah, it's the follow-up to The Path of the Hedge Witch. So yeah, it goes into more detail and basically all the words that I didn't have room for in the first book. <laughs> I think that that's awesome. And, you know, the, the cool thing about when you read these books and, you know, when I get them, it's like, oh, okay, this, this book is, some books are heftier than I expect them to be. And other books I'm like, I feel like there could have been more. And then there's book two mm -hmm. that comes out like two years later. And it's like, oh, that's where all that, all that I was expecting yes. was. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's hard because when I wrote The Path of the Hedge Witch, I needed to, you know, kind of really start from the beginning and offer offer a really good foundational base so that mm -hmm. anyone that hasn't done anything at all could pick up the book and start the practice with a good yes. solid foundation in witchcraft. So the second book, I can kind of, you know, the found tell people, if you want the foundation, go to the first book. The second book, we're going on from there. You know, we're exploring things. I don't have to repeat everything, like mm -hmm. how to cast a circle and all this other stuff. You know, it's it's going on from there. So, yeah, it'll be fun to write that one. <laughs> I think that those are some of the fun ones to, to write and to read as well, mm -hmm. because, you know, you get to go from, okay, I've taught the basics. 
hopefully everybody understood the basics and have mm. read the basics mm. and now i get to teach the more fun advanced stuff and mm. uh you know that continues from that knowledge and all it's just going to be so awesome i cannot wait for your book i'm so excited for it um, oh, and then i have to wait two to three years for it but that's okay i'll still be excited <laughs> even then <laughs> <laughs> good stuff <laughs> I absolutely love it. And uh, people can connect with you on your website. Are you on social media at all or just through yep, your website? So, uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook and I'm also on Instagram uh, under my my name because I don't have any special handles. So um, those are the two sites. And of course, my website, joannavanderhoeven.com. Awesome. Well, everybody, you have heard it right here. And you know where to find the links because they're going to be in the show description. Please go follow Joanna. Check out all of her books. There is quite a few of them, especially if you're interested in Druidry. There is a lot of books that are <laughs> awesome. Go check them out. Uh, and if you're interested in hedge witchery, go check out this book right here. And that is The Path of the Hedge Witch. It was fantastic. There will be a link in the description. I hope to have space to put all the links to the others, but if not, you can find them on her website. So check them all out. Joanna, this was so much fun. I very much enjoyed having you here. You're welcome back on the show anytime you like, and especially when your new book comes out, because I'd love to chat with you all about it. So oh, thank you. I had a brilliant time. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Everybody out there, take care of yourself, stay safe, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.